But crime is a very big issue in a lot of these states where a lot of blue state governors, for example, are under enormous pressure to address it. The same is going on in Connecticut, though not nearly at this point, as detrimental to the incumbent uh, Democratic governor, Ned Lamont, who is kind enough to join us right now. Governor, very good to have you. Nice to see you again, Neil. You know, in light of, uh, you know, this ambush of two Connecticut police officers not too long ago, crime has once again become a focus uh, of your campaign and in the state as well. Not nearly as bad as what we're experiencing in New York, sir, but uh, many are saying that you have to revisit the assault weapons ban that you signed into law uh, and, and some of the other things that have happened uh, in Connecticut, you know, in, in, including you know, cracking down on um, police behavior that gets extreme. So you're kind of like caught in the middle on this. How do you address your opponent's concerns of that you're soft on it? Well, I can tell you, four years ago when I was first elected, the first thing I did was started adding on additional classes of state police. I want more police on the beat. Today, I have more state police than we had four years ago. Gave additional resources to our mayors so they will recruit and uh, train more uh, local police. Neil, I also like uh, more diverse police. Uh, so I want people from the community to look at the uh, cops there and say, hey, this is somebody here for me to keep me safe going forward. Really important. You also mentioned guns, you know, the assault weapons. We've had some, uh, I can't have our cops outgunned or outmanned. I'm adding on cops that are to make sure that they're not outgunned, do everything I can to get those illegal guns off the street. Now, you were one of the first to, re to, to take a look at assault weapons, uh, a very controversial move. Some said they didn't go far enough, uh, that maybe there have been found some cracks and that some assault weapons were sort of grandfathered in. Where are you on that? You had hinted of maybe revisiting this. Uh, wh where does that stand? Yeah, I proposed it last time, getting uh, those assault weapons off the street. Uh, you know, we have a partial ban right now. It's being sued and litigated today by out-of-staters coming in, trying to even end that. We have about 80,000 uh, assault weapons here in the state of Connecticut legally done, given certain exemptions. I would like to get them off the street, Neil. Um, let's step back from this. I uh, you have a comfortable lead in the polls. Anything could change. I tend not to get fixated on these, Governor. I'm sure you don't as well. Uh, but I've noticed that you've not taken advantage of using the president on your behalf. Um, is that by design? You just don't want him? What? No, he um, he has come here before celebrating the fact we have the biggest expansion of daycare and child care. He's welcome. But I'll tell you something. You know, I'm a governor. I don't need a lot of out-of-state people coming in. I kind of like to uh, Connecticut to stand on its own two feet. They know what I've tried to do for the state. First business guy in this job in 40 years, a slightly different breed of cat. And um, I'm happy to run on that record. Are you afraid that what is, what's going on nationally, though, impacts you locally in your state? I shouldn't say locally. It's a big and important state. But, but that the tarnish from, from Joe Biden, whether that's fair or not, Governor, could impact you. In other words, people frustrated about higher prices, frustrated about the Democratic Party's response to those, um, could boomerang on you. I like to stick to Connecticut as much as I can. But look, a little defense there. Um, the president is the infrastructure president. I've had every president since I've been alive, and I've been around for a long time, saying they're going to be that. I've got 100-year-old roads, 100-year-old bridges, old rail that's slowing down. It's going to be transformative, some of the investments we're getting. A lot of that is by having a partner in Washington, D.C. So I, I get that, sir. You know, it's saying, you know, better times are, you know, these are things that are in the offing that have come your way. The frustration on the part of a lot of Americans nationally is that uh, the fact that the the president has not seemingly got a handle on inflation yet, not that one man can do it, but, but that that is reverberating the, hurt, the entire Democratic Party, growing talk that Republicans take over not only the House, but the Senate, pick up some governorships, uh, even New York seems up for grabs. Are you worried as a Democrat? Look, inflation is slam in the middle class. I hear that every day, wherever I go. I know what that means. Then the question is, all right, Governor, what have you done about it? 
I put in place, this is going back to the beginning of the year, the biggest middle class tax cut this state has seen, putting money in people's pockets um, as early as this summer, being the third state in the country to cut the gasoline tax. Now we have some of the lowest rates uh, you know, in the country right now, which is not great. It makes us the tallest guy in the pygmy colony. I know what's happened to gasoline, but at least people know that as a governor, I'm doing everything I can to make it a little more affordable in this tough time. And I really urge um, you know, Washington ought to be doing the same. All right. Now, again, uh, I, I had mentioned in the previous story, uh, Governor, that the Latino vote nationally seems to be shifting. And we see this every couple of years, Governor, more and more to Republicans. This could be the first year nationally a majority of Latinos uh, opt to go to the grand old party, not Democrats. I don't know the breakdown in your fine state, so I apologize. But are you worried about that? A constituency that's been very loyally Democrat might no longer be. Well, look, I look around the country, but I can tell you about Connecticut. Um, when I talk to all communities, in particular the Latino community, one most family-friendly state in the country, making sure it's easier for you to have a child here when you're ready to have that child, affordable daycare, all the things that give them a head start, very important in that community. And two, jobs, jobs, jobs. Um, I'm providing a lot of startup money to help locals grow businesses in their own community. And I got to tell you, the Spanish American Merchants Association was the first ones to come forward and take advantage of that. We have dozens of new Spanish-led companies getting started in Connecticut. So uh, finally, I'd like to get your sense of the, the, the mood, certainly in your state. And right now, you, you seem to be well-liked in your state. Again, to your point, you know, you don't, nothing's final until Election Day. Uh, I am wondering about the back and forth between the parties and how this sets up the next election, the presidential election, growing talk that Joe Biden should not be at the top of the ticket, that he's too old, that the party should look for fresh blood. What, where are you on that? And then I heard that uh, Donald Trump's ready to throw his hat in the ring in a couple of weeks. Um, you know what I do, Neil? I stick to my knitting right now. I can tell you that Joe Biden has been a good partner for me when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to daycare, and a lot of the things I'm doing to get people back to work. If I have number one, two, and three priority is get people back to work. I've been able to provide free bus service for the last nine months, just easier for people to get to and from work. That helps on inflation, helps people get back to work. Those are my priorities for the next uh, four days and, frankly, for the next four years. We'll watch very close to Governor. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, Ned Lamont, the governor of uh, the Nutmeg State, the state of Connecticut.